This is Jakari Jackson reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. We have a story for you. Summertime blues for drivers. This story out of the Associated Press. U.S. drivers paid an average of three seventy two per gallon on Monday. That's the highest price ever on this date, according to Auto Club AAA. A shade above the three seventy one average on August 20th, 2008. So we see that in the past four years with all the energy czars and energy plans and green energy and this and that, we've only managed to drop gas prices by one cent, and it's not even a full cent. Moving on here. A few drivers are catching the break, though. In states such as Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Idaho, gas prices do seem to be a little bit lower, which is a good deal. But crude oil has risen above $95 a barrel from a low of 78 in late June. In the U.S., there were problems with refineries and pipelines. A major problem with the pipeline being that Obama did not want them. We know the deal with the Keystone Pipeline. Obama came to Oklahoma and commissioned or, you know, allowed us to have the pipeline that goes from Cushing to Oklahoma to the Gulf, which, you know, is construction down there, the southern leg of it. But the, you know, northern parts of parts above Oklahoma are largely uncommissioned or inactive. So just be aware of that. And also there is a Gallup poll. We'll take a look at that. Americans favor the Keystone Pipeline. We see that 57% of, 57% of Americans actually favor the pipeline. And we even look at Democrats at Obama's own party. We see 44% favor the pipeline, 38 are do not favor the pipeline, and about 19% are unsure. So we'll keep you up to date if anything new develops with that. Also, we'll go to our next story here. Facebook stock rebounds after dropping below $19. This story is out of the Associated Press as well. Facebook's beleaguered stock got an afternoon boost after hitting its lowest level ever earlier in the day. Facebook Inc. hit a new low of 1875 before bouncing back to 1986 in, after, in the afternoon trading Monday. The stock has not surpassed its $38 IPO since the first day of trading. Now, if you are going to invest in the stock, I definitely suggest that you look into it first. And if you did, you would see that many of the, of the investors, some of the largest investors, some of the earliest investors, dropped the stock before it went public. And you'd ask, why would people so heavily invested in Facebook get out before it went public? So in to, to that question, we have a special report from Aaron Dykes, which he actually did early in the year, but still rings true. We a great forecast from Aaron Dykes, and we'll throw it to that now. So the initial public offering can be a double-edged sword, and we're going to see what happens in the case of Facebook. But is it a scam? The question has at least been raised by one University of Oxford professor named Tim Jenkinson. He says the basic question you have to ask is, do you want to buy a company where all the insiders are headed for the door? So are people buying into the IPO tomorrow about to get the investment of their lives, or are they about to be taken for a ride as a key group of insiders make themselves even richer? Many of its angel investors who put the company into the big time in the earliest stages are some of the people selling off some of the biggest shares. Those include Peter Thiel, who gave the first big $500,000 investment to Facebook. He is a steering committee member of the Bilderberg Group of Elites. The other is Jim Breyer, who's part of the Excel group. He's been linked to NQTEL, the CIA, and all kinds of intelligence firms. And he put up a very large amount of money in that second stage. We're also going to see a number of later stage investors selling off a lot of their shares, also hoping to cash in. Those groups include Goldman Sachs, Microsoft, and even U2's own Bono, whose group is trying to liquidate many of its shares. It will be an important test. How much is your information worth? Okay, so we see that the rats are always the first ones to know that the ship is sinking. A great report from Aaron Dykes. You can catch that report on Infowars.com. It's actually titled Facebook IPO Funds NSA Data Mining. And be sure to check that out. And we'll go to our quote of the day. The use of solar energy has not been opened up because the oil industry does not own the sun. That quote from Ralph Nader. I'm Jakari Jackson with the Infowars Nightly News. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. 
I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com, sign up as a distributor, and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com.